Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about March 1st, League of Legends DFS Slate. Um, it's the month of March already. Um, I cannot believe time has flown by this year, 2023. Hope you guys are having a wonderful start of the year. Um, hopefully the weather is warmer where you guys are. Um, but yeah. We had a pretty good week so far and on the two game slates. Um, but today is the first day of the week that features a four game slate, two games in China, two games in Korea as usual. So let's get it. All right. In the LPL, we have OMG versus NIP. OMG is the favorite at minus 220. And NIP is an underdog at plus 165. And then we have LGD, a huge underdog at plus 750. And then they're playing against Weibo Gaming at minus 1600, which is ridiculous. And I'll tell you why. Um, and it's based on the stats and metrics. Um, so I think there's some basis to that. And then in the LCK, we have T1, huge, huge favorite. I think the big, yeah, the biggest favorite on the slate at minus 2,000 over Kwangdong Freaks. And I don't think that is justified either. And then we have D plus Kia at minus 1,600 over DRX. Um, so we have three heavy, like real heavy favorites, minus 1,600 and above. And then we have like one kind of like a decent favorite game in favor of OMG. So let's dive into that matchup first. Um, OMG versus NIP. Both teams have been kind of like just very, very mediocre. Um, they really have a lot of potential, in my opinion, coming into the season, especially OMG, given the, the consistent roster they brought back. Uh, from last year and I think the continuity of playing together and the synergy and all that, but it just hasn't materialized, you know, um, and hit their ceiling quite yet. This split so far. Um, I think the core, the crux of the um, struggle is because of Aki at jungle. And you know how I feel about Aki. Um, he's just not a good jungler in my opinion. Uh, that fits the current meta so it is what it is but you know nonetheless omg is a mediocre team i think other players in other lanes are really good i mean not elite but really good still like shanji i think he's he's a pretty good player and then cream in my opinion um is the best player on this team and then abel and pp god are pretty good as well in the bottom lane they're not you know they're not they're no scrubs and then they're playing against NIP, who's been struggling a lot. Now they have um, one thing to note here for NIP's roster today is Pout is back in at mid lane. Um, he is replacing Dream, I believe, um, who's been starting. Pout actually had started earlier in the split, and then Dream started. Then now they're going back to Pout. Um, I do think Pout has been a better mid laner, just looking at a good sample size. Here are my notes I'll share with you that OMG, um, NIP, um, ultimately my pr match prediction for this is a toss up. Um, I do think OMG should win, um, but NIP, in my opinion, is a live dog. Um, it, you know, it, I found that there are, um, all the OMG players, except for the top lane, um, better EGPM for those players in favor of OMG. And then, as mentioned, Pout starting at mid. Uh, Pout has been better than Dream, so I think it's an upgrade for NIP. It increased their chance, increases their chance of pulling off an upset um, with Pout starting. But I think all you know, just all around, OMG has been better and has better metrics. And as mentioned, I do think NIP is a live dog. I do not believe in Aki, even though Aki has been better slightly than XLB um, this split. So XLB has been pretty bad as well. So 
really two bad junglers, in my opinion, in the LPL so far. I think it's going to come down to the mid lane and the bottom lane. Um, I think Invincible is actually has been a little better than Shanji. I mentioned about the EGPM. Um, but Cream and Able PP God have been better than these three guys, the counterparts for NIP, albeit slightly, slightly. So I do think that makes NIP a live dog. Um, maybe starting Pout and being, being motivated after getting benched, you know, maybe Pout will come out and play really well, which could happen. Um, but ultimately, I'm going to say OMG should win. Um, but I'm definitely going to have a sprinkle of NIP in my lineups. And in terms of kill upside for this matchup, um, yeah, this this is the fastest um, game and the highest kill upside game on the slate um, at 25.5 over under uh, total kills and then 0.79 um, as for the combined kills per minute metric. Um, and IP plays slightly faster than OMG. All right, LGD versus uh, Weibo Gaming, LGD versus WBG is the next matchup um, we'll talk about. This has a pretty low kills over under, in my opinion, compared to the LPL standards. Um, and that stems from the fact that LGD likes to play slow at 0.65. That's almost like an LCK level, uh, CKPM, in my opinion. But Weibo Gaming is a favorite, and they likes to play. They like to play a little bit faster than that. So, I do think still Weibo Gaming has a pretty good kill upside here, and they're most likely to win. Um, but I like you see these metrics that I just, uh, you know, research like jungle control percentage, lane control percentage, gold spend per per uh, percentage difference, and then earn gold per minute jungling. Uh, you know, among uh, between the junglers, like you see, you see these metrics, they're not that significantly better. Um, you know, WBG's metrics uh, are not significantly better than uh, LGDs. Um, I personally do not think um, Weibo Gaming should be this big of a favorite. So that naturally makes an LGD an interesting underdog GPP play, in my opinion. I think LGD won that last series. Um, you know, I think not because LGD played well. I think it was more of the opponent's fault. Um, I think the opponent lost that game when I watched it. Um, but it is what it is. Um, so that's why I have. I think I think WBG ends up winning no matter what. Um, but I do think they can drop a game. Um, as mentioned, the metrics are not that vastly different um, amongst these teams, uh, between these two teams. As I said, metrics do not justify the heavy odds, um, better EGPM for Weibo Gaming players in all of the roles, and they should win, but they just have not been playing well. Like, you know, these guys are individually so uber talented. Like, probably, yeah, I mean, the shy Carso, uh, maybe Carso Meteor, not so much, but like Shahu over XQW, I mean, light Chris versus and I and LPC Jin Zhao. Yeah, I mean, like Weibo Gaming's players are significantly better, and you saw what happened um this morning with top esports. I mean, that could happen, but that's not that's just not how Weibo Gaming likes to play the game. Um, the shy maybe that's how he likes to play the game. Um, but top esports, that's just how that's just like their identity, right? Like they have an identity that they like to. Uh, you know, play with and win the games with. That's their win condition. Weibo Gaming, on the other hand, that's not that's not how they like to play. They don't like to bully other uh, individual laners like T Top Esports does. They're not quite that elite. Uh, Weibo Gaming likes to play as a team, but they want to play as a team, but they just they're just not very good a team <laughs> um, team fighting team at the moment. Like their synergy is off. Um, that obviously can called for a disaster in an upset scenario, but I just don't see that happening two games in a row um, in a series like this. I do think still Weibo Gaming should win the series uh, at the end of the series. Um, so I do think Weibo Gaming has a pretty good kill upside here, just given their CKPM and their high odds of winning. 
and they they'll be popular, right? Like they'll they'll they're the biggest uh biggest favorite uh Chinese team that tends to have um good kill upside, right? So I think in terms of ownership, yeah, I mean I think they're gonna be the highest owned team and to stack in my opinion tonight. So yeah. All right, in the LCK we have two really high lopsided one, you know, lopsided games. What are projected to be lopsided games? T1 at minus two thousand um, over Kwangdong Freaks, but I don't think T1 deserves these odds at the moment. I know they've been they've been playing really well, like right, like just based on the eye test. I mean, they're trying out these like experiments, like Karia playing a carry. Uh, champion and Kumayushi possibly playing like Cho'Gath they were talking about. They're kind of like experimenting and trying out what's new and what works and what doesn't work. Um, and they have the luxury to afford to do that um, at the moment, just given that, you know, they've already won a lot of games. They're at the top of the LCK standings. Now, this is a good spot for for them to do that, right? Against Guangdong Freaks, one of the bottom tier teams in the LCK. So they could drop a game, right? Like they could totally drop a game, just fool, fooling around, experimenting and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, they are a better team. And the metrics show that they are a better team, albeit they're not they're not as significant as you might think if you just looked at the odds like minus 2000 right you like you would see that T1 should be should have like 10% jungle control advantage and like probably yeah i mean 11% is pretty good for goal spend percent percentage difference but jungle control percentage is not that big um in favor of T1 like and plus 33 i mean that's pretty good but I would think more and lane control, like uh, laning, <laughs> you know what, like laning wise. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's about the same. It's about even. So I do think though, at the, at the end of the day, I think T1 should win this. And like I said, if they are experimenting, if they are fooling around, yeah, I mean, T1 can drop a game, but I think at the end of the day, I think the, in the series, I think T1 should win. And of course this makes um, T1 a good team slot play but at the same time t1 has the highest um ckpm kill upside pace uh amongst the lck teams so i think t1 will be somewhat popular and they should be um i think they have a pretty good kill upside here today as well playing against kwangdong freaks who likes to play a little more up tempo than the other other bottom tier teams in my opinion so i think t1 is a pretty good play tonight as well I do not. I don't think I'm gonna have any Guangdong Freaks. They they play slow. Um, I just don't think they'll win the series at the end of the day. And then D plus Kia, uh, they're at they're a favorite at minus sixteen hundred over DRX. DRX, in my opinion, has been the worst team in the LCK. But there's a little uh, caveat to that tonight. Um, DRX subbed out Croco last series. And then subbed in Juhan at game in game two and game three, and DRX ended up, ended up winning that series by winning game two and three with Juhan at jungle. So there is a good chance that Juhan might start for DRX today. Um, that you know may may add a little layer of complexity to it. Obviously, if you are playing DRX, if you are stacking DRX, you know there is a sub risk there. Um, and DRX, I mean, I think it is a playable underdog. Um, if you if in like a very high multi main GPP, maybe multi entry GPP, because DRX has a pretty good uh, CKPM. You saw like last slate that DRX was on. The DRX actually ended up being being in the in the game winning lineup. I think it was. Um, so they have a pretty good kill upside for uh, the way that they play. Um, even though they've been a bottom tier team, they like to play a little bit faster. Um, so I do think that makes DRX an interesting GPP play tonight. But at the end of the day, I think D plus Kia is going to win this two to zero. In my opinion, if you ask my, you know, ask me for my match prediction, uh, DK has been a better team, much, much better team. And the metrics show that um, actually DK's metrics um, are better than DRX. Uh, much more significantly than T1 being better than Guangdong Freaks, right? So I think D plus Kia is the best 
uh, gives the best chance, has the best chance to win tonight amongst the LCK teams, um, even over T1, despite the odds difference. Um, I like D plus Kia to win tonight. And like I said, Juhan might start for uh, DRX, but I just don't see D plus Kia drop two games and every single, every single metric, I mean, favors DK to win. So I'm going to go with DK as my match winner in this prediction. So I think those, I think that's it. I mean, those are all four games, pretty straightforward in my opinion. Um, Yeah. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, If you like the video or if you find our videos helpful and informative, um, if you please, please hit the like button below. That would be great and greatly appreciate it. Um, it would mean a lot and keep me motivated uh, to make these types of videos a lot. Um, unfortunately, after tomorrow, I will be traveling um, out of town. So I'll probably, be, I'll probably be unable to make these videos until Sunday. Um, so just FYI. But hope you guys find these videos helpful. And then tomorrow, starting tomorrow, if you want to just, you know, send me a message if you have any questions or for my thoughts, you know, I'd be happy to share them as well. But until then, good luck out there. Hope you find these videos helpful. Please hit the like button below. Um, thank you for watching. And good luck out there. Let's make some money. Bye-bye.